Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Gas Tungsten Arc Welding. Topic number 20, Lecture Discussion. Equipment Adjustments and Their Effect on the Welding Arc. Objective, to become familiar with the effects of welding current, shielding gases, and electrodes as related to weld penetration and quality. The gas tungsten arc welding process requires a power source capable of delivering either direct current, called DC, or alternating current, AC. Alternating current is usually used on aluminum and magnesium because the arc action breaks up the surface oxides and provides medium penetration. Direct current is used on most other metals. A direct current system provides a reasonably steady current that causes electrons to flow only in one direction, from negative to positive. Direct current may be in one of two forms. Direct current electrode negative, called straight polarity, or direct current electrode positive, reverse polarity. It is important to remember that electrons always flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Similarly, in the welding circuit using electrode negative, the current travels from the tungsten to the workpiece into the work lead. This puts about two-thirds of the heat on the workpiece and one-third on the electrode. The resulting weld has deep, narrow penetration. With direct current electrode positive, the electrode becomes positive while the work lead becomes negative. This causes the electrons to flow from the work to the electrode. This puts two-thirds of the heat on the electrode and one-third on the work. The resulting weld is wide with shallow penetration. Using direct current electrode positive, a shiny bead is produced on aluminum and magnesium due to good oxide scrubbing action. However, the penetration is too shallow to be acceptable on heavier work. High frequency is normally used with DC to aid in starting the arc. The high frequency bridges the gap between the tungsten and the work to achieve arc initiation without touching the tungsten against the work. Once the current has bridged the gap, the high frequency automatically shuts off. Alternating current changes from electrode positive to electrode negative repeatedly, but too fast to be seen, as in the case of a light bulb. As you look at the bulb, it seems to have a constant brightness. This is because the change in current happens too fast for the filament to cool and the bulb to completely darken. If we slow down the action, however, we can better see what is taking place. If we further slow down the action, as the current builds toward the positive polarity, the bulb burns brighter and brighter until the maximum current is reached. The current then falls at the same rate until it reaches zero, and the bulb goes up. The current then starts to flow towards the negative polarity, building up to a maximum value as before, only in the opposite polarity. Alternating current fluctuates between positive and negative. For one-fourth of the cycle, the current goes from zero to maximum, with the polarity being electrode positive. The current then drops from maximum back to zero, and after this point, the polarity becomes electrode negative. The current again goes to a maximum value, 
this time with electrode negative polarity. From the maximum value, the current again goes to zero and the cycle is repeated. Alternating current possesses good qualities of both direct current electrode positive and electrode negative when welding metals with a relatively thick oxide coating such as aluminum or magnesium. During the electrode positive portion, the current breaks down the surface oxide of the base metal, while the electrode negative portion of AC produces medium penetration. Alternating current provides good cleaning action and medium penetration, which makes it ideal for aluminum and magnesium. Since the current is zero at times when welding with AC, the arc would tend to go out. A high frequency current is added to prevent this. For this reason, high frequency is used continuously with AC in order to maintain the arc. DC requires high frequency only to start the arc. The shielding gas protects the weld funnel and tungsten electrode from oxidation during welding. The two most commonly used shielding gases are argon and helium. Argon is less expensive than helium and is the gas most often used. Argon also produces a lower arc voltage than helium at a given amperage. This makes argon excellent for welding thin gauge metals where low arc heat is necessary to prevent excessive root bead penetration. Helium is normally used on heavy aluminum weldments where high heat input is required to produce deep root bead penetration. This is due to the greater arc voltage associated with helium as compared to argon. Argon is heavier than air, causing it to remain in the arc area when the puddle is below the nozzle. This makes it necessary to double the gas flow rate for helium in these positions. Helium is lighter than air, which is ideal for positions such as overhead, which locate the puddle above the gas nozzle. In some cases, the gases are mixed to produce a gas with the desirable features of both. Usually, a post-weld gas flow is used to prevent oxidation of the cooling tungsten and solidifying puddle at the completion of the weld. There are four types of tungsten electrodes. Pure tungsten, zirconium, 1% thoriated, and 2% thoriated. Pure tungsten and zirconium tungstens are used with alternating current. Pure tungsten is normally used for welding with AC. Zirconium tungstens are used for making high quality welds requiring X-ray inspection. The high current carrying capacity of these electrodes reduces the chance of tungsten inclusions. Zirconium electrodes have a high resistance to contamination and have good arc starting capabilities. 1% and 2% thoriated tungstens are used with direct current. These tungstens are alloyed with a compound called thoria which increases the current carrying capacity, provides longer life, and improves the resistance to contamination. Thoria also provides better arc starting and stability. The 2% thoriated tungstens possess these qualities to a higher degree than the 1%.